Hello everyone. This session is going to give you a very brief overview on cell cycle. So the question that arises is, what is cell cycle? Now with the, uh, the you know, the um, cell theory suggesting by, by Schwann and uh, Skleden, it was suggested that every cell gives rise to another cell. And uh, therefore, there is a cycle that is followed by each cell by way of which the cells can multiply. So let us look at the learning outcomes of this session and understand what we mean by a cell will give rise to another cell. The cell cycle is the mechanism of the duplication of the genetic material. So every cell has a genetic material except a few like for example red blood cells etc. But other than that there are all cells including bacteria that would have DNA of their own and uh, the duplication of this DNA is a must for the cell eventually to divide. So the division would lead to cell reproducing and growing and that is something that is what is being told by the cell theory. The cell cycle is divided into interphase and mitosis with the former ensuring duplication of the genetic material and the latter ensuring division of the cell. The interface is divided into three phases and within these is what is called as the S phase and during the S, the S here stands for synthesis, during the S phase the entire DNA duplicates itself. The mitotic phase has all the different steps of mitosis followed by cytokinesis. So effectively what you can very clearly observe is that the cell cycle has two phases. One is what is called as the interphase and the other one is what is called as the M phase. So uh, the understanding is suppose you have got two cells that have just got divided. So therefore on division what you observe is that both the daughter cells have deployed number of chromosomes. Now this daughter cell can go into dividing again to give rise to two more new cells. But what is the requirement is that if initially it is 2n then after division both the cells that have been obtained should be 2n should be deployed which means that what one understands by mitosis is that on division the parent cell gives rise to two daughter cells with equal genomic content, identical genomic content. So any daughter cell would first undergo cell growth and uh, in the period of growth it is going to prepare itself for uh, chromosome replication. It replicates, the chromosomes get replicated, the chromosomes get segregated and then you have the cells dividing into two to give rise to two daughter cells. So this is actually how the cell cycle is maintained. So every time you have the daughter cell undergoing replication and then undergoing division. So this is what is cell cycle. So you can very clearly uh, kind of put across that for a cell to divide, S phase is important and M phase is also important. S phase is where you have chromosome duplication happening, what we call as DNA replication. And in the M phase, you have all the different phases of mitosis followed by cytokinesis to give rise to two daughter cells. And as you can see, the initial uh, parent cell was 2N that is deployed. And when you get the two daughter cells, again, they are 2N. So that has to happen. And because that has to happen, there is a stage where the cell is 4N. That means it has double the number of DNA. Now let us understand that during mitosis, okay, or basically when you see this part, okay, is what is called as the interface, okay, and you can see that uh, the, in, within the interface is the S phase that is the place or that is the phase where you have the DNA replicating. 
and after you have the replicated DNA within the cell, the cell from the interface enters the mitosis. And in mitosis, we know you have prophase, you have prometaphase, you have metaphase. In the metaphase, you have all the chromosomes aligned at its equatorial plate, and then you, it leads to anaphase. So this transition is very important, and in fact, this transition is regulated. So from metaphase, you have anaphase. In the anaphase, what one observes is that the identical chromosomes that have been formed due to replication, they are going to separate so that each identical chromosome is moving to the two poles. And after it reaches the two poles, you can see how the nucleus is formed again. So you can see the nucleus that was there in the prophase has disappeared, okay? And then it is reappearing again when it reaches telophase. So at the telophase, you can see that you have already the DNA uh, getting into the nucleus and then you have cytokinesis. In cytokinesis, you can see you again have two daughter cells and the number of chromosomes that is present is 2n. So this is something that is important. And what is also important for us to understand is that the interphase has three phases. This is one phase, this is the second phase, and this is the third phase. So it has the S phase. This is where the replication happens. And that is the longest phase of the uh, interphase. While you have the G1 and the G2, G2 comparatively much smaller than G1. So the longest phase is generally S phase in the interface followed by the G1 phase and then the G2 phase. But of course, when you have a daughter cell entering the interface, it will first enter the G1 phase, then into the S phase and then into the G2 and then again into mitosis. So you can already see how the cycle is. So getting into that same thing again, you can very clearly therefore see that uh, when, say, consider a mammalian cell, you will find that the M phase, where you have the mitosis and the cytokinesis is taking place, it is only for about one hour. So, in a 24-hour cell cycle, the cell exists more in the interphase. So, the interphase is about 23 hours. So, you can understand that when a cell cycle leads to cell division, the actual time that the cell is taking to divide is only one hour, but the time that the cell takes to prepare itself for that one hour is 23 hours. And in this 23 hours, the cell is going to grow. When you say grow, what do you mean? Of course, size is one thing, but growth is also in terms of uh, number of proteins, chromosomes, etc. So everything that is needed for the mitotic stage because what is understood is that all these different growth that is there, you will not have that happening in the M phase because the M phase is dedicated only for division. At that time, you do not have gene expression, you will not have protein formation, you will not have chromosome duplication, nothing. Only thing that is going to happen in the M phase is divide. Okay, so therefore every, every necessary thing that is required for the M phase has to be prepared during the interphase. And that is the reason why the interphase is much, much longer than the M phase per se. Now the G1 and the G2 that you see over here, so as the cell after dividing enters the interface, it first enters the G1. G1 is the gap one phase. This is the first phase where you have the cell uh, growing. So it will not just grow in size, but it will also, you know, kind of uh, uh, monitor both internal and environmental, um, uh, external environments to see if cell division is going to be conducive or not to see whether the cell can sustain itself to divide further, whether it has all resources to divide. So it does, during this phase, therefore it does monitor everything, right from internal 
uh, to external environment and based on whether the internal and external environment is fine, it will decide whether it can go ahead to the S phase. Now, it's also observed that uh, G1 uh, phase is the phase where if the cell comes to know that the environment is not conducive for proliferation, then the cell can get arrested and go into what is called as the G0 phase. So the G0 phase is what is called as the quiescent phase or what is called as a dormant phase. So in this stage, the cell is going to be metabolically active to survive, but it is not going to proliferate. However, when the environment becomes conducive again, a cell that has entered the G0 can again get back to the cell cycle and then again to S phase and M phase and continue to proliferate. Now, you would say that there are certain cells which remain in G0 for long phases. Also, there are certain cells that remain arrested in G0 for their functions to take place. They do not go into mitosis again at all. For example, neuronal cells are cells that stay in the G0 phase for years together. Okay, As long as their functioning is happening, they do not proliferate further. That is something that is there. Plus, they have developed connections with other neurons. And so, uh, because, of the because these connections have been developed, they do not go in for mitosis. They do not go in for proliferation. So, then the cell is seemingly arrested in what is called as the G0 stage itself. Now, what is also interesting is that for every cell, cell to uh, go into cell division, it has to at the G1 phase or at the uh, junction between the G1 and the S, cross a barrier, cross a checkpoint which is called as a start point. Or in animal systems, it is also called as a restriction point. So this is a stage where the cell can actually decide whether to go in for G0 stage or whether it can, it can go across the start point and go into the S phase. This is something that is very important. So to go, go into a little detailing on that, so as you can see, the daughter cells, okay, can enter the G1. So within in the G1 stage, which is the gap one stage, and this can be around eight to ten hours. And uh, in the G1 stage, you have the cellular contents being formed. Uh, the chromosomes are not being multiplied, but all other contents are getting multiplied. Whether it is the proteins, etc. All of these are getting duplicated. Why duplicated? Because these would be needed as the cell moves forward. If the environment is not conducive, you can see that it can be arrested. So an important aspect, very important aspect is that once the cell enters the S phase, it ensures that the DNA replicates only once in a cell cycle. And this is a new carriers basically, which means that once a cell uh, has entered uh, the S phase, it cannot enter the S phase again in the same cycle. It enters the S phase only once. That means its DNA is duplicated only once and this is something that is controlled. So every cell that enters the S phase ensures that the DNA replicates only once in a cell cycle. And the G1 phase, as mentioned, the cell is definitely looking at or monitoring various extrinsic and intrinsic signals, extrinsic and intrinsic cues that decide whether the cell will go for G0 or it will cross the start point. Now, intrinsic cues can be, for example, the cell size itself. Extrinsic, extrinsic cues can be uh, the nutrient availability, you know, whether phosphate is available, whether nitrogen is available, nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, these are all macronutrients that are required for the cell to grow because these are constituents, these are nutrients that are required for developing biomolecules and all the biomolecules are needed for functioning of the cells. So are these nutrient elements present or is it that they are going into a starving condition? If they're going into starving condition, they cannot even think of dividing. So that is an extrinsic cue. 
So there are lots of molecules present inside the cell that can perceive the extrinsic signals, that can perceive the intrinsic signals. And uh, because of that, they can decide whether they want to go ahead with proliferation or they want to get into cell cycle, or, uh, arrest, in, arrest and stay quiet in the G0 stage. Several model organisms have been used to study cell cycle. Today, whatever you know about cell cycle has been because of uh, using these model organisms. So the most common ones are uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. A lot of studies on cell cycle has been done with respect to uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, yeast and you can extrapolate it to humans to a great extent. Many studies have been carried out with Caesomyces, uh, Saccharomyces, uh, Caesar, Saccharomyces pombe. Um, uh, although both are yeasts, their cell cycles are very different. And so it, was in, it is interesting to note how the regulations can be different, how, um, uh, uh, how cells of the same uh, species can also have a different cell cycle. Then metazoans have been used to a great extent, for example, Xenopis levi has been used to study cell cycle a lot. The fly, Drosophila, has been used a lot to again study cell cycle. So they all have contributed to understanding of the cell cycle. So let us make the conclusion. The cell cycle is divided into two main phases, interphase and M phase. The interphase is the longer phase of the two with it being subdivided into G1 phase, which is about 7 to 10 hours. S phase is about 10 to 11 hours, 11 to 12 basically, and G2 is around 2 to 3 hours. The G1 and the G2 phases are the gap phases which is used by the cells to equip themselves for proliferation in terms of duplication and division. So G1 is to prepare for the S phase, while G2 is to prepare for the M phase. They are also phases of monitoring environments conducive for cell division. The S phase is when the cell's DNA replicates, and the M phase includes nuclear division and cytokinesis. So with the mandate of the cells to reproduce, DNA duplication and subsequent cell division are organized parts of a cell cycle. The cells ensure that the environment is conducive for division, else they become quiescent. Please always note that if the cell enters the S phase, then it is committed to cell division. Thank you.